um, we're going to talk today uh, about how casinos are reopening from the, the pandemic and best practices as it relates to security measures to help banks maintain efficiency. We'll also do a preview of a brand new camera that we have coming out. It's a five megapixel camera that has a mask detector capability on that. So we'll talk more in depth about that new camera. So let's go ahead and get started. So with most states across the nation relaxing ordered closures and more people just starting to venture outside the stay-at-home orders, businesses are not only trying to figure out how to reopen, but also how to stay open in the event of a second wave, and also how to maintain efficiency with all of this. Now, unfortunately, though, as people do start heading back to work, and according to OSHA, most American workers will likely experience a low to medium exposure risk at their place in from employment. So it's really essential for businesses to consider and follow CDC guidelines. Now, the effects from COVID-19 have been inconceivable, but the good news is that, again, all states are in various stages of starting to reopen. Now, in preparing to reopen, Las Vegas casinos in particular are striving to reduce transmission among employees by mandating masks from everyone and also they're maintaining healthy business operations as such as installing partitioned plexiglass at gaming tables and maintain a healthy work environment they're trying to do things like install sinks throughout the, the casino and for example the bellagio is actually doing that and they're starting to disinfect dice and even chips to help maintain a, a healthy work environment. Now, thermal technology is one approach to helping businesses keep customers and employees safe. Now, thermal technology is, is not new, and in fact, it was used during the outbreak of SARS several years ago as a way to detect fevers. In fact, because fevers are associated with illness and the fact that outbreaks have been occurring every couple of years, having a temperature monitoring solution in place is a proactive approach for the future, especially when the flu season starts up again this fall. So this type of technology really provides an automatic non-contact way to help monitor temperature so that exposure is limited to your security personnel and anyone else that, that may be taking temperatures maybe manually. And it's actually faster than using a handheld thermometer for higher efficiency. Now, of course, there are a number of things that a business can do to reduce the risk of infection, including installing plexiglass at the casino reception desks and also bank teller windows, um, placing decals on the floor so that social distancing is followed, requiring employees and customers to wear masks. Also, installing touchless hand sanitizing devices and asking guests to use their cell phone to complete the registration process like when they're checking in uh, at a casino hotel and also offering frequent breaks for employees to wash their hands and like i said the bellagio has installed hand washing stations throughout their casino uh, just to, to promote more hand washing and sanitation. Also uh, mandating more cleaning, such as, like I said, disinfecting the chips and dice, and also the teller counter after each customer comes through, and also screening employees and customers for uh, elevated temperature. But ensuring that people will actually follow these rules can be very challenging. 
And this is where DAWA can really help. So with our solutions, we can automate requirements so that you and your staff can concentrate on getting back to business versus manually taking temperatures or reminding people that they need to wear their mask and telling them when they can and can't enter uh, the either the casino or um, a, a particular part of the facility due to capacity restrictions. So DAWA actually has four solutions that can help reopen or provide a higher efficiency when it comes to casinos and banking. So our first solution is our temperature monitoring solution. And this is going to be more ideal for your large, large businesses, um, maybe a larger banking institute or a, a casino um, that has a constant flow of people coming and going. And the second one that will help with higher efficiency is our new five megapixel mask detector camera. So this is really going to help in identifying anyone who is not wearing a mask. And if they are not wearing a mask, it will automatically announce through an external speaker that they need to put one on. And the third solution that we have is our flow control solution. And that involves counting people to help control the capacity of people that are coming and going um, in your place of business versus someone actually standing at the door and manually counting. And then our last solution that we'll talk about today is um, the thermal temperature station. And this one is going to be more ideal for smaller businesses, such as an employee entrance, or it could also be used perhaps at a casino hotel at the registration desk during check-in. So Damon's going to talk about both the control, the flow control and the thermal station. But I'm going to start off here with talking about our thermal temperature monitoring station. So with this solution, uh, you'll, you'll need uh, the hybrid camera, which is a thermal camera, and then there's a visible sensor as well. You also need a, a black body calibrator and then our NVR. So what this provides is a very high accuracy for temperature monitoring at 0.54 degrees Fahrenheit. It also has our EPOE technology. So that's gonna allow you to convert any type of coax to pure IP. And it also gives up to three times longer distance transmission than a standard IP camera. Uh, you also will be able to do any type of remote viewing and configuration because we have a free DMSS app. And that's available for either Android or Apple. And this solution will also uh, capture the person's identity automatically as it has face detection via the NVR. So in the event that somebody does register a high fever um, or elevated temperature, you will be able to identify that person and um, ask them you know, to step aside and, and do a, a secondary measure. Um, so this, um, ca the capability is that it can do um, long distance rapid screening and um, it also can do higher efficiency versus, uh, you know, having a handheld solution without fearing any type of cross contamination. So now compared to a handheld thermometer where the person can only measure, you know, one person at a time and it's going to take a minimum of at least three seconds per person, there's going to be more risk for contamination and it also increases the, the personnel because you have to have somebody there dedicated to, to measuring. However, with DAWA's temperature monitoring solution, the efficiency is increased as it can measure people much faster for a constant flow of traffic. So people are able to go through the line much quicker as compared to using a handheld device. 
So if a fever is detected or an elevated temperature and an alert, an instant alert, as well as an image of the person's face is going to be recorded and then sent so that personnel can do a secondary method of measuring their temperature using a clinical grade thermometer. Now, most casinos, such as the Wynn Resort, indicate that they will turn anyone away that registers a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Uh, however, CDC guidance states that the minimum temperature that indicates a fever is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So the great thing about this solution is that you can put, um, you can indicate what, what you want it to be um, as far as re registration. Um, so you can put it at, you know, 100 degrees, you can put it at 100.4 degrees, whatever you want. So um, the user is able to specify that. Now, probably the most accurate way of measuring a person's internal body temperature with a thermal camera is by measuring the inner canthus, which is actually part of the eye that includes the tear duct. Therefore, if you want the most accurate reading, it's going to be best for people to walk through some type of stanchion in a single file line and to remove any type of head accessories or eye accessories so the camera is able to read from the eye area. That is where you're going to get the most accurate temperature reading um, from your internal body. Now here's an example of some images where the person's eyes are not exposed. So the thermal device is not able to get an accurate internal body temperature reading from the inner canthus. So if you look at the four pictures at the top of the screen, the temperature reading is actually based on the person's skin. So it's going to be best for individuals that are coming through a temperature checkpoint to remove any type of hat, glasses, push long hair away from the face, again, so that the eyes are exposed and the camera has the capability of reading from, you know, the, the, the canthus area. Now, for example, if someone is wearing glasses, uh, thermal devices are not capable of measuring through the glass. So in that instance, the camera is going to be measuring from the person's forehead, which is the next best area to read from. So even if they're just wearing eyeglasses, they should remove those as well, because again, we want the, the most accurate reading. Um, and then the, the, the image at the bottom of the screen uh, just shows that it's able to reject false positives, such as a hot drink. So it can detect that, you know, that it's not able to, to see the, the eye area. Um, it's able to identify that that's not a person's face. So it's not going to give you any type of a false positive. Now, with Dawa's solution, we use AI technology. So what that's going to do is allow the camera to first try and focus on the eye area for the most accurate reading. If the camera is not able to detect a reading from the eyes, it's then going to search and focus for the forehead, which will then give you a skin temperature reading. Okay, so let's talk about some vertical use cases. So although the solution won't be suitable for every application, some examples of ones that will benefit are your, again, your large, busy installations and indoor applications. You're, we do not recommend using this outdoors. And we, and, um, you, you can have some variations in ambient temperatures. Um, so some verticals that are good for this would be casinos, airports, jails, terminals, any type of a medical or hospital and um, manufacturing and warehouses. So you can easily install this at the entrance, um, trying to stay away from any um, 
drafts or, or air conditioning vents, that type of thing, um, you're going to want to make sure that it's it's off, not directly inside where the, the door and the airflow is at, but, but back from that. Um, and you can also use this throughout the facility as well, and maybe a, a certain, you know, checkpoints that you want your, your um, employees to go through throughout the day uh, just to monitor temperature. So most of the top Las Vegas casinos that have opened are using thermal screening at their entry points to check both employees and their guests. So, for example, Boyd Gaming Corporation, Caesars, um, the Sands, MGM, Station Casinos, and the Wynn, they're all using some type of therming, thermal screening device at their entry points so that temperatures can be checked from both employees and customers. So here's just an example um, of a casino that is using the, the Dawa hybrid solution. And um, so this is a Connecticut-based um, Foxwood Resort Casino. Um, also another Connecticut-based um, facility is um, the, the Mohegan Sun, as well as um, the Maryland Live Casino. So these are all using our solution in combination with other uh, types of social distancing and hand sanitizers and, and that type of thing. So because of the, uh, the pandemic, on, on March 17th of this year, the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity issued an update to its guidance indicating that employers may now implement temperature screening measures in response to the COVID-19. However, some people are still concerned in regards to privacy. And so um, we have the ability to do privacy masking on our both, both of our, our cameras here. So um, on the left-hand side, you see the, the visible image. And then on the right-hand side, this is the, the thermal image. So in the first example, you can see that the thermal lens is completely blacked out. And then in option two, which is below uh, the surrounding back background of it is blacked out and then the person is actually um, visible. And then on the third one, both the, the, the person and the background is, is both blacked out. So if you do have privacy concerns, um, maybe you have the monitor on display where other people are able to, to see the information. You can, you know, um, help maintain privacy by using privacy masking. So this is an example of a cosmetic manufacturer who deployed the solution to monitor employees when they're entering the building. Now, one issue that they did run into was that the employee's skin temperature was reading a bit high when they would enter into the, lo the, re the Reno location from the desert heat. So the way that they were able to solve that was by installing stanchions to give their bodies a chance to cool down. And from their feedback, it's taking uh, typically anywhere from one to five minutes of them standing in that stanchion. Um, it gives them a little bit of extra time for their bodies to cool down. So even if you're not coming in from the desert heat, maybe you just ran in, um, or maybe you just have, um, the, a tendency because your your body has a larger mass to to have elevated temperature when when walking. Um, there's a number of uh, you know various um, 
you know, things that, that could be happening that you may have an elevated temperature. So the best thing to do and what we recommend is to deploy some type of stanchion or, or waiting time um, after coming into the building in order to allow your body to get back to normal and, and cool down so that, again, you're getting the most accurate um, reading. So some key components in, in this solution um, we'll talk about. So what I do want to say um, before we go any further is that uh, the dowel temperature solution is not an FDA cleared device or, or approved and is not to be used to diagnose COVID-19 or any other type of disease. These devices are simply for a, as a screening tool to detect an elevated body temperature and any type of fever should always be confirmed with a secondary clinical grade thermometer. Um, so if you do get somebody who is having an elevated temperature, you'll want to take them off to the side and take um, a, a clinical grade thermometer just to verify that they are having an elevated temperature. So the first piece of our solution that we recommend that I talk briefly about is the NBR. And this is the only NBR in our line that we do recommend um, as it is able to do face detection. And this NBR is a 16 channel. It's an AI recorder and it is um, able to detect positive ID of a known individual against a face um, a facial database. So if you are using it at a place of employment, you may want to have each person register their faces registered into the database. So if they do register as having an elevated temperature, their known identity will pop up um, automatically. Now, in the case that you have people just at random that are coming through the facility um, or, you know, a casino um, or a banking customer or something like that, obviously their, their known identity isn't going to be identified, but it will pop up that they have an elevated temperature. And again, like I said, the, the visual of their, their actual face will, will come through so you know who to um, you know, take off to the side and, and do the secondary method. Um, the second piece of this is the thermal dual camera. So as I mentioned, it has a visible lens and that is eight millimeters. And then it also has the thermal lens, which is 13 millimeters. It has the LED light and an IR light of up to 114 feet. It's does high accuracy when used in combination with the black body, which we highly recommend using with um, the camera, which I'll talk about in a minute, and it's 0.54 degrees Fahrenheit of accuracy. It does have an SD card slot, and um, it is IP67 rated, and it's a two megapixel visible sensor, and then the thermal sensor is uh, 400 by 300. So I'm not going to go into um, every single spec, but I do want to go through just the most important ones that will have the biggest impact in making your decision if you are comparing options. So with the resolution, first of all, the higher the resolution, the better the image is going to be because the more pixels that you have, the more data points that you're going to have. So you're going to have more accuracy. So when you look at the camera's resolution, you can see that it's um, it's a, a 300 by 400 resolution. And this is very important because when you measure the canthus area of the eye, it's very small. So getting the most resolution from this is very important. So the more temperature information that you have, the better the measurement will be, and therefore the higher the accuracy is going to be. Uh, the other one I want to point out on here is the sensitivity, and that's the NETD. And this is what um, is the, the temperature contrast. So the lower the number, the less noise, so the less false information that you're going to get. 
So the lower the number, then the camera can tell the difference between two data points for detecting temperature. So the lower, the better. Um, let me just show you an example of that too. So in this example, you can see 60 um, MK versus 80 MK. So it's going to um, show you the, the sensitivity there. So the lower the sensitivity, the better the camera is going to detect the, the minimum temperature differences for visual reference. So as you can see, um, the 60 is much cleaner, more crisp, more clear, um, whereas the, um, the micro Kelvins for the 80 is, is a little bit noisier. It's not as, as clear, so you're not get, gonna get as, as high of an accuracy there. The other spec I wanna point out is the pixel size. So this is the distance between pixels so that you have better resolution. So the smaller the number, the better um, the, the, the camera is going to be. So um, we recommend installing this at a distance of up to 23 feet away and um, about a 12, up to 12 feet wide of like a stanchion area. And again, um, this is best used for constant flow of you know, large numbers of people. Okay, so the black body. So that's very important in, in this solution um, because accuracy is the most important part. And without having the black body, your accuracy is gonna be compromised. So um, the black body is really, um, is the calibrator and it's gonna show the known temperature of, the, of its surroundings and it continues to recalibrate recalibrate uh, due to changes in any type of ambient temperature. Um, so humidity and emissivity of the skin. So it's always reading to the highest accuracy. So this is again very important in, in having um, this in the solution. So um, the black body will always need to be within view. So if you see this image right here, you can see that this here is your black body and that's in, um, it, it's visible from the, the camera. So we offer three types of mounting for the black body. We have a ceiling mount, we have, um, you can do this on the wall or ceiling, and then we also have tripods. Uh, there's also three ways to mount the camera and they all use the, it, it's this, the same mount. So you can use the tripod, again, the wall or ceiling mount, and then we have this longer ceiling mount coming. Um, it should be here within the, the next couple of weeks. So overall, here are all the components that you would need. Um, now, the, the black body um, MSRP is just about uh, 6,000. Uh, your, your camera, uh, 13,799. Uh, you also need the storage device that the MSRP is 14,99.99. And then if you wanna add on any type of a monitor switch or, or mounting. So you're looking at a total solution of more or less around 22,000 and, and some change there. So um, at first glance, this does, you know, seem like a, a pretty hefty price tag. However, it's actually going to pay for itself within the first year if you do comparing that to having to execute manual temperature readings because you're going to have to account for, you know, the obviously purchasing um, very good um, calibrated temperature devices. Um, you also have to consider, you know, you would be having to get um, PPE equipment and also having somebody there manually. So um, this will, will most definitely uh, cost, you know, in comparison to that, will, will pay for itself in about a year. 
So this is just a recap of the benefits of this solution. It Again, it's accurate, efficient, and it's fast screening without having any type of personal contact. You are able to get a visual alert instantly when an over temperature is detected and it is uh, EPOE, so long distance transmission, ability to deploy over coax cable. So we are integrated with various VMS partners if you um, are using any of these. And we're also in the process of going through and doing some others as well. So if your partner, um, if your VMS is not on here, please let us know and, as we may be already in the process of, of um, getting it integrated. Okay, so um, now we're going to talk about the, the new 5 megapixel mass detector camera. So this is another way to help casinos and banks um, to have an active alarm message for detecting if a person isn't wearing a mask. So some of the top features with this camera, in addition to the fact that it does a, a mask detection, is that it does have smart motion detection. And we'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes. Again, it has the EPOE technology. It does do face detection. It does people counting. It also does perimeter protection, which we'll talk about, and heat mapping. So in addition to this being a camera that can detect for masks, it's also great as a security camera that does uh, a lot of other things. It has a lot of other benefits as well. So now banks have had their share of challenges as well as having to quarantine, physical pay for money, um, they've had to limit in-person banking and have had their share of issues with um, online banking as customers are being required to, to use digital banking versus, um, you know, going to the bank itself. So the 5 megapixel camera is going to be great for banks in installing this at perhaps at the entrance or slightly inside the entrance and that would send a warning again if the person isn't wearing a mask. Any type of lobby area, teller area, you could install it over the ATM and because it has that people counting capability you could install this at the entrance. Um, also, you could use our, our um, temperature monitoring solution, which is, um, you know, a bit on the high end side for a small bank. But if you have a larger financial institute that does get a lot of people coming and going, it may be suitable for that type of an application. So I'm going to go over some of the top specs or some of the, the standard specs that this 5 megapixel cat pixel camera has. So um, it is able to identify up to 18.4 feet. Um, so you're going to be able to get detailed images of a person's face or any type of, of details that you're looking for at about 18 feet. And it can detect objects at long distance of up to 183 feet. It does have dual stream encoding and does 30 frames per second. It is a 2.8 millimeter lens and it does have starlight technology going down to 0.005 lux. So that's going to be al allow you to see details in very low lighting. It has true wide dynamic range so it's good for installing you know just um, outside a door or in a location that does have a lot of windows. Um, because it's able to see both the dark shadows and any type of sun glare and be able to provide a, a clean, detailed image. True day night, it has integrated IR up to 98 feet. It does have various intelligent um, IBS rules, which I'll talk about more in detail. It has the ability to work in very cold applications down to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It has the smart Kodak 
of H.265 and 264, so it is backwards compatible and can save up to 90% in storage and bandwidth if you compare that to the, the H.264 Kodak. IP67, IK10 rated. It does have the SD card slot and built-in mic and speaker. Um, it also has this feature called One Tap Disarm, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but that's going to make your, um, your life much easier because you're able to use that with our DMSS app. So as I mentioned, this camera does feature smart motion detection. And this is more, this is mostly ideal for um, getting less false alarms. So if you get any type of an alarm from weather, of animals running through, um, any type of debris or leaves blowing around, you can eliminate all of those false alarms with your smart motion detection because it's gonna give you an improved alarm accuracy for up to 95% because it's just gonna be focusing on any type of people or vehicles that are detected in the scene versus all of that other stuff that you may be getting false, false alarms from. So as I mentioned, the camera also does have perimeter protection. So perimeter pre protection kind of does the same thing. It's just a slightly different, and I'm gonna explain the differences between the two, but whether it's SMD or perimeter protection, they're, both of them are helping you to get less false alarms. It's eliminating um, you know, weather, leaves, debris, animals, anything like that. It's just focusing on either people or vehicles, and you're able to decide um, which of those or both, if you want, um, the camera to focus on. So with SMD, um, really the main difference is that all you're doing is clicking a button and enabling it, and it's automatically going to um, detect uh, just, e again, either people or vehicles in your scene, and you can decide which one you want. With perimeter protection, you actually have to draw the lines, so it's best to use the perimeter protection in scenes that get that get a lot of traffic and you just have one area within that scene that you want it to focus on. Um, and it's actually better for your more complicated scenes where there's specific areas of interest where you're gonna need an alert. As far as, far as SMD goes, it's actually alerting to your entire scene. You're not drawing any lines. Again, it's just a click of a button enabling people and or vehicles. So here's just a, a quick um, overview of the difference here. So uh, on the left, we have perimeter protection. And if you, let's say, are just wanting to concentrate on the sidewalk, you would just have to draw, go in and draw your lines on the sidewalk, and then it's just going to be alerting based on that area. So it's not going to alert this car that's driving by or um, uh, anything like that. It's just going to focus on that area. Now with SMD, you wouldn't have to draw any lines at all, so it's going to pick up on people or vehicles anywhere in the scene. So it's going to trigger these vehicles over here, um, anybody walking or, or running through any part of this area, it's going to trigger. Now, another cool feature with this camera is that you can do any type of customized voice um, messaging. So, for example, the, the camera can, is, is featuring, um, it does feature various recorded message, messages, um, such as a person um, needing to wear a mask if they're detected. Um, however, you can go in and either self-record um, via the built-in microphone that it has, or you can actually upload an audio recording 
if you did it, you know, somewhere else and you just want to upload it. So it gives you that great flexibility to customize whatever it is, whatever type of message that you want. So you can use the pre-recorded messages that it comes with, or you can self-record whatever you want and just, or just upload it. So with that, you just have to click the audio linkage. Um, so let's say that you do upload something. So um, over here, this is the, the screenshot. So you would just click audio linkage, how long you want to play it for, um, whatever file it is maybe that you're, that you're using. And then if you want the warning light to come on as well, you would um, click that button. Um, up here is where you would determine if you're going to use it with tripwire or intrusion. So you just would have to, to link your audio. Another great feature, and this is the, our first camera in our line that comes with this, is the Smart Dual Illuminators. So it gives you the capability to either do IR mode or white light mode, and then there's this Smart Illumination mode. So IR is able to read um, up to 98 feet, and the white light mode, which is just your, uh, your alert mode um, that you can trigger on, um, that can go up to 49 feet. So these dual illuminators, they really adopt a deep learning algorithm. So typically the illuminator is on at night, but then if a person enters the monitoring area, the white light is gonna be triggered on and then the camera records the scene in full color. Um, the camera will then link a snapshot and a video with the full color image. And then when the person exits the room, the, monitor, um, the monitoring area, the white light will turn off, the illuminator remains on. So you're gonna get uh, much higher efficiency and you're gonna have a reduction in light pollution. So let me show you how this works. So I have a video here. So the IR is on now, and now you'll see a person walk into the scene, and then it's going to trigger, and it's going to go into full color. And now when the person exits, it'll go back to uh, the IR mode. So. Um, so here is the smart dual illuminator um, screenshot. So this is where you would just go in to determine if you want to use the smart illuminator um, or you're using the IR or just the, the white light. So the one tap disarming. So um, as I, I mentioned earlier, this is a, a cool feature that's very convenient and easy. Um, and that you can use right on your phone through our free DMSS app. So um, I, over here is the screenshot of what you would do. So you can just enable um, or disable the, the, the or disarm um, the feature. And you can do the relay out, you can have it send an email, you can do the audio linkage, you can also make it um, do a warning light. So um, the best way I can describe um, why this would be um, helpful is, let's say, during the daytime when you're on the premises at, you know, at the bank, obviously you don't need the, the camera to come on and, um, you know, capture and, and turn on video um, recording when somebody's just, you know, in the bank. Um, however, at night, you, what you would want to do is just enable that, this feature, and then it will work where if somebody does enter or breaks in, um, then it's going to do what I had, I had showed you in the video where the IR light is on and then it turns into full color and it starts recording. So when you go back to work the next day, you're just going to want to disarm that so that it doesn't do that during the daytime. So that's probably the, the best type of um, description that I would say for 
it being beneficial. So, you know, you just, you know, just click of a button when you go into work the next day um, and then click it again when you leave at night. So some application scenarios. Um, so you can do IR um, with perimeter protection to do that active alarm. So you can configure the voice to meet the requirements of the scene. The sound is, is very loud and the, the sound level is actually adjustable. So it can help to stop any type of dangerous behavior. Um, could send a warning message that you're you know, getting too close to maybe the reservoir or a pond. Um, and then there's another scenario here. You could use the LED and your face detection and then to get that, that full color video. So you could actually end up using um, that as a street light and um, it can accurately help to detect faces in very low light conditions. So this is just a, an overview of using the smart illumination with the perimeter protection and then the, the active alarm. So again, as the video kind of showed, was a person entering the camera, or I'm sorry, entering the scene. Um, the IR was switching into color mode and then when the person triggers the line, um, it could send an alert to warn the intruders, uh, and then the intruders would leave, and then the full color switches back into the infrared mode. So installation of this, um, what we recommend is uh, the height is uh, 9.8, angle 0 to 45 degrees, and I can do a distance of up to 19.7 feet. So some recommended scenarios, um, maybe you would want to use the perimeter protection in construction sites or any type of, of dangerous area, maybe for pool safety, after hours if somebody tries to access the pool, illegal dumping um, at dumpsters, a lot of times people try and, you know, dump their trash, and so if you use that perimeter protection rule, where you're just targeting the dumpster area within a scene, and then somebody um, you know, is caught dumping, then a, a, a light will turn on and it will come over with an audio recording that they need to leave the scene. Uh, you could use it for lakes, again, for type of safety or any type of restricted areas. You could use the, the MSD, uh, um, the smart motion detection for any type of banking, um, like the vault area. So we have mounting options. You can do a wall mount, you can do pole mount, or a ceiling mount. So we have all of the accessories here. The PFA 109 for your ceiling mount is going to be new, and that one is coming in um, soon. Um, I would say around within the next two to three weeks. So here I'm just going to show you a quick video to give you an idea of what you can do. So in that particular case, it was just sounding an alarm. The, the voice recording wasn't there. But again, like I said, you can do that. And then here's another one. So in this case, it's able to be that one person within the group doesn't have a mask on. So it's detecting that everybody else has it, but one person is not wearing a mask. Okay, so pricing for this camera. So the US MSRP is $369.99. That's a great price for a camera that has all of these capabilities, as I mentioned, a lot of great features, um, five megapixel, very high resolution. So uh, MSRP for the Canadian pricing is $517.99. And 
we have uh, supporting literature so if you would go on to our website all of our solution guides also we have a thermal landing page that features a lot of different types of vertical solution guides so we do have one up there for banking we also have one up for gaming particularly and a, just a, a general one here which is the first one as an overview but we have other verticals as well so if you do access our landing page for thermal you can get all of those downloads there we also have all of the data sheets we have a and e specs up for all of our, our cameras, including the, the new five megapixel. This one is not in stock yet, the five megapixel. It should be in stock within the next, um, I think it's gonna be the first week of July. So uh, about, about a week or two. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Damon So go ahead, Damon. I think you should have access now. Okay. Hey, Jennifer, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can. All right, thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, so yeah, so getting back, um, so our main um, kind of topic of their webinar was the back to business for um, casinos and banking. So here I'll go over the solutions we have to offer. Um, as we mentioned, um, there's a lot of new guidelines um, released from the CDC on um, you know, how to implement um, more safety uh, rules um, even for, for, for casinos and banking. So they have these listed out on their website right now. So as you see, um, some of the, the main points is um, you know, temperature checks, face coverings. Okay, so here's a topology we'll have for our basic um, casino reopening solution. So we, as you can see for the casino entrance, we may put the thermal station with the, the, the floor stand. Uh, we'll have people counting camera and we have our flow control solution. So that limits the amount of uh, people um, coming in. So with this, <clears throat> and then we'll have um, you know mask uh, detection um, cameras uh, throughout the, the, um, the gaming area just so pe give people a notification. And within like a casino area, like, um, you know, they also have a built-in like like hotels with them as well. So we'll find we'll find for the hotel reception area a great use for this um, thermal station because it does have a desktop stand. And it, and as Jennifer mentioned, we can use the um, the thermal station uh, for staff entrances as well. Okay, now for casino entrances, uh, Jennifer mentioned. Um, you know, we can use the whole pools full solution that, ha that includes this, that we have the stanchion and the black body solution with the cameras as we have lots of people are crossing by but we can also offer you know um this the face <coughs> uh, temperature uh, monitoring um, station so the station has um you know pretty accurate temperature within 0.9 degrees fahrenheit uh, we just we just set up a, a detection a guidance area and have the um, station with the floor stand built in. And can, we can do scans uh, to people. It'll take less than a second per person to scan. But if you do have multiple people, you know, a whole group of people coming in, a better solution for that would be that full um, full solution with the black body box. Okay, now flow control. Um, as we know, the, some of the CDC guidelines also uh, reduce the amount of um, people allowed into a certain area at, at a time. So at, in Vegas right now, we're seeing um, casinos offering um, occupancy at less than uh, 50% of its original. So what our flow control solution does is with, with the people counting cameras, uh, you put one in each exit or entrance area and it'll connect back to our um, NVR or our DSS uh, software and it can output a, a display showing people how many people are in, currently inside and you can set a threshold so if, it, if it's less than that threshold it'll show a green light and where you can let people um, enter so you don't need a physical person standing there doing uh, people counting so what this so what this um, technology does is you can output this information to an external monitor or digital signage 
a product and it will, it'll be right at the entrance area so people can see if they're allowed to, to enter or not. Um, like I said, um, with the hotel area within the casino, um, using the thermal station as, with a desktop mount is a great solution. So the person just walks up to the station and gets the uh, temperature scan. So if it's elevated temperature, it'll get the uh, notification alarm and, and the alarm warning. And you can also set this up with a, a mask uh, detection as well. So it can detect if it presents a mask. And if it doesn't, then it'll remind the person to wear a mask. A gaming area, well, we see a great uh, use for the new uh, mask uh, detection camera uh, that Jennifer talked about. So a lot of people, you know, still going inside to the casino, um, some will not be wearing face masks. So this would be a good, um, good warning for the, um, the customers just to have the audio alert with, if, it's, if it's detected that the person isn't wearing a face mask. Um, similarly, for the casino uh, with staff entrance, staff entrances, we can align uh, with this um, thermal station, so the person can do a uh, you know, temperature uh, check, a mass detection. So with this with this um, device, the person just has to stand uh, one to five feet away to get the scan. Like as, as I mentioned, um, it is uh, very accurate within 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So this would be for the staff. So here's an example of our camera being deployed at a casino. Okay, so you can see um, a lot of um, Boxwood Resorts casinos is using our um, solution. And another is the Mohegan Sun. So I'll play this video. So Mohegan Sun is using the full um, black, black body solution, a temperature solution. So you see they have that kind of um, guidance area stanchion set up so people have to walk through the area to get scanned before they can enter. So currently in 10 of their casinos and expanding into six others. Okay, and that was from Mohegan Sun. Okay, now we're um, moving on to banking. Um, CDC guidelines also have very similar guidelines for banking and their precautions in the lobby area. So with the solution that we use for the casino, we can easily uh, relate that to the uh, banking industry as well. So as you can see here, for the waiting area, we'll have the mass uh, detection cameras. And for the lobby entrance, we'll have, we can have set up the uh, temperature station to do the, um, the scan of the customer coming in. As you can see here, a quick diagram about the lobby area for a bigger bank. Um, it, it really depends on the size of the bank. If it's a lot of people coming in, like more than 30 people at a time or something like that, the better solution would be that full, full solution with the black body um, calibrator box. If it's a few people at a time, you know, a great solution would be that thermal station that takes uh, one, one temperature at a time. Um, waiting areas, um, you know, similarly to the casino, we can uh, apply the, the uh, face mask uh, detection camera. So if it detects the person not wearing a face mask, you know, it has, it'll send the audio alerts to remind the customer to put on a face covering. 
Okay, now with all that said with the um, camera solution, or with the uh, casino solution and the banking solution, um, it can all be um, sent back to our VMS, which is our, our DSS um, software. So this um, the software, uh, the VMS software supports uh, real-time display and it supports um, the pop-up alarms for you know, elevated um, human temperatures. And you can also look through um, historical data of, of um, of the customers and photos so you can you know go back and re review that information and also has um, rich um, alarm linkages for events as well okay now um, a quick um, reminder for the new dss software for the dss express you will need that that base model here and that base model um, includes the flow control people counting and the thermal station now, if you're going to upgrade to a to the DSS Pro system, you would need um, two licenses. One would be the base license for the software, and another would be the BI module, which is the business intelligence module for the uh, flow control function. Okay, that is all I have, Rebecca. Great. Thank you, Damon and Jennifer. I uh, realize we've gone over a couple minutes, so thank you, everyone, who's staying, hanging on with us. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and enter those at this time. We'll we'll stay on for a few more minutes so that we can get any questions that might come through. Um, it looks like um, we don't have very many in the queue at the moment. Um, so um, we're going to go ahead and just take a look at those and uh, see if we can provide feedback. Looks like we just need a little clarification on a few of your questions. Damon, it looks like we have a question about the storage option for flow control. Yes, so for the flow control option, the question is, do you need a server or can it be used with the 5216NVR with flow control camera? Yes, so we have uh, multiple options, but it can be used with only the NVR. So you don't need the, um, the VMS software unless you're going to use multiple, um, have multiple um, stores where you want to, you know, you know, control um, from one single location. But for a single location, uh, the MVR is good enough. Um, yes, yeah, so the part numbers for the licenses again, let me pull that up right here. So you can see that uh, screen. So the, okay, so the one question, um, the all-inclusive temperature screening system require DSS so software separately. So DSS software is just to manage the, the units. You do not need, it is not required to have the temperature uh, screening. So again, um, another question, the MVR is used in place of DSS. So the DSS is the central monitoring um, platform. So you, if we have multiple, say multiple locations with NVRs, you can have that connected to one central location. For if you have like a chain of, um, of stores you wanna um, control from one, you wanna control from one area. Okay, great. I think that looks like it covers most of our questions that um, they were related to the DSS. Thank you again for everyone who joined us. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our team. Um, we have a lot of resources available on these systems. We have how-tos on our DAWA wiki that the tech team has put together that are extremely useful. Um, and our sales team's also always happy to talk to you as well about implementing these systems for casino and banking verticals. We hope you all have a great day and thank you again.